Chairwoman, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be with you. Yes, I am sure that you are busier than ever. Can you tell me just a little bit about what's going on in the RNC about 40 days out from the election? Yeah, 40 days out. We're in the home stretch. I've been traveling all over the country. I think I've been in four or five states in the past couple of days. It kind of is a blur, but so is the Trump family. So is the vice president. You see the presidents on the road and we're just making sure we're taking the case to every American as to why President Trump deserves four more years, why we need the Senate and why we deserve to win back the House. There is a lot of controversy right now going on with uh, the Supreme Court. You've got Democrats saying that, uh, you know, we're going to make sure we're going to pull out all the stops to make sure this doesn't happen. How do you feel that the president and the Republican Party are navigating this kind of crisis? The president is leading like he always does. He is exactly right. We need to fill this vacancy There's nothing that says because you're 40 days out from an election that you have to stop governing, that you put a pause on making sure that we have checks and balances, that we have those three branches of government. And especially with Democrats systematically challenging election laws across the country and upending election laws in many states uh, and changing them uh, to create chaos on election day, I think it's more pivotal than ever that we have nine justices on the Supreme Court. Yes, absolutely. And can you explain the difference between we've kind of talked about it on this podcast, but for the people who are saying, well, whoa, 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 what about 2016 when Mitch McConnell said that he wasn't going to try to confirm Merrick Garland? What is the difference between 2016 and today? Well, it's a really clear difference. And Mitch McConnell has been very straightforward on this. Uh, When Merrick Garland was put forward, you had a president from one party, the Democrat Party, and a Senate majority of of Republicans. And Mitch McConnell said, when you have opposition between the two parties at the executive and legislative branch, we shouldn't move forward on a Supreme Court nominee. But the voters decided in 2016 to give Republicans not just the presidency, but also majority of the Senate. We had that vacancy. Voters wanted Republicans to be in control of the Supreme Court. It was a key issue in 2016, and they need to fulfill that duty uh, because they were elected to do so. And it's constitutionally within the president's right to put forward a nominee and the Senate to advise and consent. Yes, I have had a lot of followers talk to me about their friends who are on the left side of the aisle who have truly had some sort of breakdown after, unfortunately, Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, passed and who have even been believing what I think is craziness that women are going to lose the right to vote. We're going to lose all of our rights if Trump is able to confirm his Supreme Court nominee. Can you just tell us why uh, that is ridiculous propaganda and why women especially have nothing to be scared of uh, when this uh, SCOTUS pick is confirmed? We, women have nothing to be afraid of with this SCOTUS pick. It's not surprising that Democrats are going to engage in fear mongering and division. And hopefully they won't, but I think they will. Character assassination like they did to Brett Kavanaugh, destroying a good man uh, because of power. Uh, I mm-hmm. hope they don't do that to this next nominee. Listen. The court is a judicial body. These are very uh, sound mind minded individuals. They have spent years studying the law. They work in cohesion together and they're always going to put the Constitution first. And what the president is putting uh, at the front and center of his nominee pick is somebody who will adhere to the Constitution and the rule of law and not be an activist judge making law from the bench, which is not their role on the judiciary and, and that and that branch of government. I think that's critical. And again, the voters in 2016 knew that there was a Supreme Court vacancy and they chose Republicans to fill it. And that is why we need to follow what the voters want this election and make sure we fill that seat. You know, Democrats are saying that they are going to, uh, I think it was Richard Blumenthal who said that they are going to stop at nothing. Nancy Pelosi said that she's got uh, arrows in her quiver. George Stephanopoulos, you know, asked Nancy Pelosi, are you thinking about impeachment? Do you think that they're going to take one of those kinds of extreme strategies to stop the president from governing? 
I don't think the Democrats will stop at anything. I mean, literally since President Trump's been in, in office, they boycotted his inauguration. They've refused to work with him on any level. We've had this phony impeachment. I mean, so many things. Even before he was in office, you saw what the Obama administration did spying on his campaign. We've never seen anything like this. And Democrats have never accepted the results of the 2016 election. They have never given the president any pathway to any type of part bipartisanship. And it's not surprising that Nancy Pelosi is already pulling out the possibility of impeachment for the president <laughs> doing what the Constitution dictates the president does, which is put forward a Supreme Court nominee. It is ludicrous, but it's also another reason why this election is so important, because if Democrats lose, and they are they are rebuffed for obstruction and resistance and all the terrible things they've done the past three years that have divided our country, then they'll have to find a different game plan. And maybe, just maybe, they'll work with Republicans and on behalf of the American people like they're elected to do. You know, there has been a baseless theory. I believe it's baseless thrown around in the left wing media and by Democrats saying that Trump is somehow not going to accept the results of the election, that there's going to be some crazy coup. Again, just fear mongering propaganda. Is there a fear, though, a legitimate fear of Democrats being unable to and I'm, I'm not, you know, propagating a conspiracy theory about a coup by them or anything. I'm saying is there any fear that they are not going to accept the legitimate results of the election if and when Trump wins? Well, I mean, the clock's ticking and they still haven't accepted the legitimate results of the 2016 <laughs> election. So I don't think there's any doubt that they're not going to accept the results when Donald Trump wins in 2020. Hillary Clinton has already told Joe Biden, do not accept the results, do not concede under any circumstances. Those were the words she used. You have seen Democrats systematically try to upend voter integrity laws that ensure election integrity. In states like Michigan, they just passed through the claims court the ability for votes to be counted 14 days after the election. Right. There is a reason there is a finish line. If you don't have a finish line, you can't have a winner. Mm -hmm. And Democrats are trying to get rid of any type of, of deadline, finish line, end date to an election. Why are they doing that? In these uncertain times, how is this good for our democracy? Especially when we know that voting in person is safe. Dr. Fauci has said so. Michigan had a primary in August with a million voters voting in person. There was no coronavirus spike. So they are using this pandemic to upend vetted, tried and true election laws and inserting chaos into this election. And the president is absolutely right to point out the concerns that he has about election integrity and getting results on Election Day. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. And Joe Biden's pitch, though, is that his presidency will be a return to normalcy. His presidency will be a return to, you know, peace and safety and security and, and all of that. But if you look at not just what his campaign um, has said and done, but also the, the Democrat run cities across the country are the ones dealing with the unrest. And President Trump has tried to send help. And unfortunately, in some cases, these uh, Democratic politicians haven't uh, haven't uh, agreed. So what is uh, is there anything behind the Democrats pitch that Joe Biden can bring in safety and normalcy when that's just not what we're seeing from the Democratic Party? Uh, Joe Biden has spent 47 years saying whatever he thinks the voters want to hear and then getting nothing done in Washington. He is a total bureaucrat. But here are the policies he's putting forward. So don't listen to his empty rhetoric because they are just words and they are lies when he says this, that there's going to be a return to normalcy and peace. Things that he is espousing, reimagining the police, mm -hmm. redirecting funds from the police. He has said he wants to get rid of cash bail which means police are catching criminals that are doing violent things, and then they have to be immediately released back into the streets so the police have to use resources again, catching those same criminals. Kamala Harris has bailed out some of these rioters and yep. looters who've done havoc in our cities. So their actions and their policies prove to the American people that they are in lockstep with these Democrat mayors and Democrat governors who are not clamping down on the violence in their cities. And they are not standing with the men and women who are serving our country and serving our communities and protecting us every day, our men and women in blue. So Joe Biden has no business saying that. Uh, he, he likes to say it. He's going and taking cans of beer to police stations and trying to be a good guy. But his policies will make our country less safe.
And his statements as well, every time something can just happens in a city where there's an accusation of police brutality, his default is to blame the police without looking at the facts of the case, but just to latch on to the mainstream leftist narrative, which simply isn't always true, which I would say actually exacerbates the tensions and stokes the flames of division that are unfortunately causing a lot of the chaos that's happening uh, in the cities around the country. Let me take a break and tell you guys about Car Shield. So, seeing the check engine light, at least when this happens to me, I get a lot of anxiety because I don't like to deal with things like that. I don't like to do the little things that are inconvenient, like out of my path and the things that I have to do that day. And so, when I see that my car needs fixing or maintenance, I I get a lot of anxiety and I really uh, don't like that. But that's why. That's why there is CarShield, because they help people like me. I don't have to worry about that anymore, because CarShield offers a wide range of protection plans that can save you thousands for a covered repair, which means that the check engine light is a lot less scary when it comes on. You have the freedom to choose your favorite mechanic or dealership to do the work, and CarShield gets the rest taken care of. I hate those menial details, and I'm so glad that they take care of it. Even if your car breaks down while you are traveling, the choice of a repair shop is still up to you. On top of that, there's no long-term contracts or commitments. Payments are flexible and CarShield plans uh, are customizable to your exact needs. CarShield has helped over 1 million drivers. That is why they're America's number one auto protection company. You might dread repairs, um, which is very understandable. Most of us do. But that is why you need to get CarShield to give you peace of mind. Get coverage today and see why CarShield cars go farther. Call 800-665-2157 and mention code Allie or visit carshield.com and use code Allie, that's A-L-L-I-E, to save 10%. That's carshield.com, code Allie. A deductible may apply. On a personal note, I mean, you are a mom, you're obviously a working mom, and you have real concerns, not just as the chairwoman of the Republican Party, but just as an American, as, as a mom who cares about the future of the country. Why, from that personal mom perspective, do you think Donald Trump is good for the country? I think this is the most important election of our lifetime. And I say that as a mom, I am worried about the America we will be leaving for our kids. And will that American dream be achievable and attainable? And Joe Biden is taking us down a path to socialism, government control of our health care, of our decisions, of our lives, more taxes, more regulation, everything in the hands of politicians and and really limiting the great opportunity that that this country provides for so many. Donald Trump is about freedom. He's about what our founders intended. He has cut taxes, he has cut regulation, and he is for keeping America, America. Joe Biden is not lying when he says he wants to transform this country. Mm. He will transform it into something we don't recognize. So that is why I'm on the front lines of our future every day, because I want that for my kids. And this is an election that will determine which path America goes. And I hope I'm hopeful that we go down the path of prosperity and that Donald Trump will continue to lead us on the great American comeback. Well, me too. Me too. How are you guys feeling uh, about uh, about the potential for a win on election night or at least in the days soon after? Well, you know, I'm a party chair, so I have to always uh, feel like I'm running from behind. You know, I'm also a Big Ten football fan. You know, you you don't want to like sit on a lead, right? That's like the worst thing you can do. So I feel great. The energy's great. We've outpaced Democrats in voter registration. The ground game's great. We have the best candidate in the world who's out there working and the best policies that will deliver for the American people. But that being said, I'm not going to rest. I say to people, you can sleep November 4th. This is the time where all of us need to give everything we have Mm. because feeling good and thinking everything's okay is not enough. We have to fight between now and Election Day to make sure we're preserving the greatest nation on earth. And that means reelecting President Trump, keeping the Senate and winning back the House. Well, thank you so much for all the work that you are doing and everyone at the RNC is doing and everyone in the campaign in general. I know that you guys are working really hard. Y'all have been up against a lot for the past few years and you will be over the next few weeks. I keep telling people to brace themselves if you're not already. It's a crazy time, but you know, I'm hopeful and optimistic as well. So thank you again. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. 